Our Lakeshore campaign features content that some viewers may find uncomfortable, including gun violence, drug use, and sexuality. For more detailed information, including full content warnings and transcripts, check out the show notes or our website, therealmscast.com. Previously on Many Realms Lakeshore, things heat up at hardware. Susan tries to strike a deal with Knox, letting him know that he's wanted by a pair of goons. Knox decides to handle it himself, but bites off more than he can chew when Max and Mickey beat him down in the alley behind the bar. He pins the missing machine on Susan and scrams over to Ileana, cashing in his debt to have her take care of the problem. Meanwhile, Kitty runs into her estranged sister, who turns out to be none other than Roman. Kitty recognizes hardware as the scene of her previous vision, and she's frantic to figure out a way to stop the fire and destruction she foresaw. Susan is trying to pump Kitty's stepdaughter Liz for information when the goons burst back in. Max starts lighting up the joint with her arcane ammunition. Roman summons a rainstorm to put out the fire, further damaging the bar, and the catwalk collapses. Susan catches Liz before hightailing it out with Joan. Knox, his band, Roman, and Kitty all attempt to flee, but Max blocks them off. Kitty approaches to de-escalate the situation, and Max fills her stomach with hot, magical lead. Knox demons out and summons some hellhounds who rip Max apart. Kitty's last impression as she loses consciousness is that of her vision. Knox, demonic, looming over a dead body in a burning building. Hey, I'm Jory. I'm playing Kitty, the Oracle, and it's striking to be here. I am Jordan. I play Knox, the Tainted, and it's fetching to be here. Hi, my name is Jillian. I play Susan the Hunter. It's dashing to be here. Hey, my name is Eli. I play Roman the Fay, and it's swimming to be here. I'm Jesse, I'm the MC, and after 45 minutes of non-stop hits from the 80s, 90s, and today, we'll be back with more Many Realms. <laughs> stand on the landing of the staircase of your house. It is dark. The clock on the wall is ticking toward 4 a.m. Muffled jazz bleeds through from upstairs. One of your many roommates is also facing a sleepless night. After what seems like another three hours, but is closer, by the clock's measurement, to 20 minutes, the door to your room swings open. Lamplight gently spills onto the landing as Jim Stevens steps towards you. His canvas apron, usually stained with splatters of motor oil, varnish, and paint, now bears prominent streaks of bright red blood. With a stony face, he peels off a pair of gloves, sticks them into his apron, and holds your gaze for a long moment before speaking. She'll live. Jim, I don't know how I'll ever be able to repay you for this. You can start by talking. Um, well... I, I mean, that's my sister. Um, <laughs> the hardware burnt down and flooded last night. A uh, bunch of people came in shooting, guns blazing. I think people died. I mean, I know at least one person died. Uh, sorry, my brain is a mess. What, kiddo? You're saying she just walked in front of a bullet? No, uh, there was this... Machine, I think, and these two mercenaries came in. Oh, you saw this machine. Yeah. It's that. <laughs> People want it, I guess. Really bad. Um, my sister tried to talk them down because, of course, she did. Uh, and then this happened. This is bad news, kiddo. Who sent those guys? Rex Lemire. He, uh, grimaces tightly, and he says, um, was Ileana at the club? Yeah. I mean, we're not exactly on the best terms right now, so I don't know where she went, but yeah, she is there. What are you gonna do about this? <laughs> Jim, I appreciate this help, I mean, more than you'll ever know, but I don't exactly have all the answers right now. Uh, I... Well, let me tell you, kid, I was... As someone who, uh, believe it or not, was young once, <laughs> I've been around the block and I've seen some shit, okay? 
Ileana, she's uh, nice enough when she's high, but if you fucked up her club, if you had part in that, she's going to take it out on you or whoever she saw in that place. And much, much worse than that, if Rex Lemaire is on your case, you need to have a plan figured out of your fucking goo on the sidewalk before you can sneeze. You know that, right? He's he's big trouble. Jim, I know. I know. I'm fucked. I know. I don't... I, I want to change my face if I can, but I can't. I, I don't have a plan right now. Uh, right now I'm thinking, I don't know, get the sunshine back into the city. Um, that's the best I can do so at least one powerful person doesn't want me dead. But hey... These are the cards I've been dealt, so... Knox has the machine. Do you know that? He came to my shop. Oh, I didn't know that, but thank you for telling me. What? Why did he come to your shop? He wanted me to see if I could figure out what it was. I didn't say anything about your photos, but I, uh, I sent him packing. If he's wrapped up in this, I mean, frankly, I don't trust him far as I can throw him. I think... You need to figure out what he knows and if you can trust him or not. Or I could just take the machine. Hey, if you want to deliver it to Rex, I mean, it's about a 60-40 that'll solve your problem. 40% chance will kill you anyway. Not bad odds. Yeah, uh, Roman's mulling that over. Look, Jim, I, I, like I said, I really appreciate what you did. I'll try not to involve you anymore, um, and I won't bring any more dead bodies to you, but... Well, luckily, you haven't yet. But I might have to end up asking you for more help before this is done. You know, I care about you. You're a sweet kid. You're just trying to do what's right, but you're mixed up in some pretty heavy shit, and I've done a lot of work and burned a lot of bridges to put all of that behind me. I'm helping you out as a special favor, kind of a one and done. You get me? Yeah, Roman's disappointed, so I'm just gonna go into my room and close the door behind me. Okay. Jim sags his shoulders. He sighs heavily. He doesn't love how he handled that, but he's also, like he said, worked really hard to kind of set a boundary for himself. I'm actually taking a lot of info from Jim from the veteran playbook, because I think that's kind of a cool twist to it. So you do owe him a debt, for sure, for him saving your sister's life. Wake him up at 3 a.m. to perform emergency bulletectomies. And he is going to take out a little pad of paper and write down some, like, notes about, like, cleaning the wound and, like, making sure not to, like, put too much pressure, whatever, whatever. Slide it under the door and then um, excuse himself out of the house. You enter your bedroom to see your sister, Kitty, unconscious on your bed, I guess. <laughs> yeah. There is a um, metal dish that has some fragments of bullet that have been pulled out of Kitty's abdomen and laid in there along with a pair of tweezers. Kitty, this emergency procedure, Jim actually does like have a fair amount of expertise in treating not necessarily bullet wounds, but like medical treatment in general. He has healed you to harm. When you heal harm, remember to heal from like the top down. You, if you took three harm from the bullet, mm -hmm. you still have one grievous harm, which means that you have like a, a serious continuous injury that will take time to heal. Uh, Urban Shadows characters are all assumed to have like fairly supernatural kind of healing but a bullet wound, if not like immediately fixed, will still linger and cause issues, of course. Are you awake, do you think? I mean, I'd have to imagine probably not. Yeah, I'm gonna say no, maybe not at this point. Okay, uh, Roman, what do you do? I would wanna be like, hey, Kitty's husband, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> but I also don't know how to reach him. Like, I don't even, I know his name, but I wasn't even there at the wedding, so I don't even, I don't think I know what he looks like. You've probably Kitty's met. purse has been thrown into the corner of the room. Amazing. Um, if I look through it, is there any, like, identifying... Have a driver's anything? license? That would have my address on it. You don't have a driver. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why you? can't I have a driver's license? I don't, I just don't picture you, I picture you as, like, being driven. You're being driven. <laughs> Do you have a contact book? Oh, yeah, like a little... A little black Those book. Those used to exist. Books. Address yeah. book, yeah. I buy an address book. I also <laughs> buy that there is, um, a spare vial of sunshine that Kitty took from, um, Betty's room and meant to bring back obviously was she was returning it okay right right I'm gonna take it have to confiscate have to <laughs> take and have looking through the contact book I'm guessing there's only one Philip do you know that her husband's name is Philip yeah like she was like my I'm getting married to a man named Philip and I was like I'm, bye true okay, okay. <laughs> um yeah Philippinakis a little um very conservative like um 
somber little heart next to the name in the address <laughs> somber post. heart. Just like, it's not like, uh, it's like, heart. It's the black heart, heart emoji. Yeah, it is like the black heart emoji, essentially. <laughs> pixel by pixel. Um, okay. Do f- do phone booths exist? Yes. Phone booths exist. Yes. It's under a very strong street light. It okay. is under a single, like, beautiful sodium orange street light. The shadows are all, like, pitch black. Ugh. Great. I mean, it, oh, it is four in the morning. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to hobble on over to a, a phone booth. Okay. Call up Philip. I, yeah, he would answer the phone at, Kitty never came home last night. Yeah, he's worried. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Okay. Hello? Philip? Who is this? Who are you? That's not the voice I expected you to have. Identify yourself at once. You're married to Kitty, right? What do you want? What is this about? No, relax. I'll pay anything. Oh my god. I'm her sister. Okay, so relax. Uh, I just wanted to call and say Kitty's safe. She's with me, so don't freak out. Where are you? I can be there in ten minutes. Where are you? (laughs) I'm just letting you know you don't have to call the cops, dude. And I hang up. I'm gonna call the cops now. That's brutal. <laughs> That's so. Well, he doesn't know where to find me. And then you head back home to wait the night. Yeah, or wait till she yells up, wakes up, and I'm gonna yell at her. That's Till she yells up is She'll... good. <laughs> okay, you hang up the phone. You step out of the phone booth and take a look at the long, dimly lit, empty streets of Fairside. It's coming up on 4:30 in the morning and you rub a little bit of blood that's smeared on the heel of your hand, stick your hands in your jacket pocket, and shuffle off back to your house. Susan Stalling. That's me. Yeah. Where do you head with uh, Liz and Joan? So my priority is to get away from the club and far enough away that we can talk for a second because I don't feel like the Naturalist Society is a safe place to go. Joan, yeah. can you get Liz home? Yeah, yeah, I can do that for sure. Um, are you going to be okay? Yes, I'm fine. There's something I want to take care of. And then first thing first in the morning, we are packing up all of the notes in the Naturalist Society uh, because there's a huge target on our backs. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll get there early then. Yes, if you could help spread the word to the other ladies, it's a rare bird sighting! Ooh, it's an emergency! Operation Bird of Paradise, yes. Yes. We, we have that, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so I'll, I'll see you in the morning, yeah? Yeah. Liz is looking up at you, she's kind of collapsed into, like, Joan's arm, and Liz is looking up at you with big, trembling, tear-stained eyes, and she's like, You saved my life. I was, I was gonna fall off that and I was gonna die. I would never let that happen. Who are you? Susan's just fine. I, I, if you, any, anything I can, if there's anything I can do for you, Susan. Okay, at the moment, no. Please get home safe. Hopefully we meet again under better circumstances. Did you, I'm sorry, did you see where my, where my stepmom went? She was there, I saw her before I fell. Sorry, no. I, I don't think I know her. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Joan heads to a streetcar stop with Liz. So Liz owes you a debt now? Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of solidifying that. That was one of the ones that she had kind of penciled in from the start of the game. So what is your secret mystery business? I guess I still don't have Knox's address. But I want to talk to I wanted to talk to his bandmates to get his address so I can go there and look for the machine. Also, if I see Knox, I'll just follow him home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, are you trying to like track him from Yes. Okay. So so maybe the scene is like you dismiss Joan and Liz and then you loop back around to hardware and you see Roman and Nat and Jackson carrying this uh wounded bleeding out woman uh by her underarms out of the club through like a fire door. Do you Knox do you like stay demon form? Do you like like what do you say after you turn demon like rips one to shreds and then go like pizza roti like <laughs> uh n- no i certainly don't stay it i don't think that nox is a fan of remaining in that any longer than he has to i mean i i would just hope that everything's normal why do not jackson i just would be focusing on trying to get uh, kitty out of there with them just gonna play it cool 
Yeah, you know, smooth, like jazz. Yeah, which you're famously very good at. No. Oh, yeah. No, I'm right. infamously I forgot. Yeah, very mediocre. Bad. Yes. Mediocre. Right. Uh. Serviceable is the word I use. Serviceable. Serviceable. So I think that probably at some point Roman is like, I know someone who can help with this. My house is closer. I'm going to take Kitty back. Like, thanks so much. I'll Venmo you. You know. <laughs> like, you, you eventually split off because you don't want, you don't need these people around you while you're trying to, like, get your shit done. Yeah, I don't think I'm like fuck off, but it's also like I don't know. I don't. You're just there. The priority would for everyone would just be getting Kitty to safety, and I would depart at some point. And I'm assuming that and Jackson don't really know how they feel, and I'm talking about the band or something right now is not a priority. So I'm assuming that we just go separate ways at the end of the night type of a thing. Okay, so let's. We're not gonna be like let's have this discussion now. <laughs> yeah, well, I I think you find that they are their. Um, even maybe largely like ignoring you and acting like you're not there and if you get close to them they kind of like flinch they are like really not okay with what they saw at hardware tonight um and once kitty has been say pulled up onto the porch of roman's big old like rambling boarding house um they skedaddle hard they if they if they had a like i mean i get that so i'll just kind of part ways at home okay so let's jump to the good bit which is um <laughs> what's your grand entrance miss are you like already in the bedroom smoking a pipe and like playing dominoes well how do you find it if, if i knew where he lived i absolutely would but i don't i just like follow you home in the shadows and then before you go into your apartment it's like i'm behind you <laughs> can i say that you like he like goes to close the door doesn't close there's a foot in the door yeah, yeah. i want that like moment okay Knox, you come face to face with one susan starling and she looks steamed slightly broiled Hungry? Oh. Oh, well, in that case, uh, Roti? I'm a poor starving artist, so <laughs> kind of the wrong place. Uh, like okay. wolfishly hungry. Hungry uh, like the wolf. Yes. Evening. What are you doing in my house? I thought we could have a little, a little chat. All right, whatever. Just come in and apologize for the mess. And fumble my keys and. And go inside. <laughs> that was great. I felt like I was there. Thanks. Susan, you step inside Knox's um, slightly cramped, slightly messy room. It doesn't smell like dead body anymore, so that's a good good plus. Those Lysol wipes. Just bleach. The machine also just like <laughs> like on the top shelf of your closet. It's under the, it's under the floorboards. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> yeah. You and floorboards. Um, you know what? We're going to do some Hitchcockian shit. I'm going to call it a dining room. It's more like a dining nook that has the table and the two chairs, and I will gesture for, uh, you know, Chris Hansen's seat here. And underneath there'll be a nice, there's there's like a little area rug, and underneath there, like if the camera comes like through the floorboards, oh yeah, if the camera comes through the floorboards, that is where the machine is, right underneath where we're talking. Uh, you want uh, anything, coffee, beer, uh, I got some no, whiskey, just, scotch. Just answers, will do, thanks. Hmm. Okay. What? on God's Green Earth happened in that alley. I don't know, I thought we just had a conversation. Got a little heated conversation. Oh, oh, you don't say? Mm-hmm. Because last I checked, you were limping home. I'm okay, I feel good, look. And I'll kind of, I don't know, bounce on my legs a bit or something. Are you still grievously wounded? No, no, because I healed with that he heal with that demon's demon shift. Forms. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty looking pretty, pretty good. Cool. That's the second time that's happened. <laughs> I'm sorry. The last time we spoke or saw each other on that staircase, mm -hmm. you were in rough shape. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I was, but I guess it wasn't as bad as I thought so you followed me all the way to my house I did okay you're not here to talk about whether I look beaten up in a club that woman burned down a building with a gun that doesn't happen well you know it does uh, and actually you mean this gun and I'll show the rune gun whoa you have it. <laughs> it's runic baby yeah it's a pretty uh, this is a pretty cool little thing isn't it I mean I understand how it works 
So the gun that you uh, lifted from Max's body has some arcane runes carved into the side of it, and it comes with some bullets that have matching runes carved in. So when you use the gun with regular bullets, it functions as a regular pistol to harm, loud, close slash far. When you use the fire bullets, of which there are two still, the tags are three harm, fire, loud, close slash far. So fire bullets make it go fire boom crazy, otherwise regular guns. Can I, would you mind if I looked at that? Mm -hmm. Does it look special to me looking at it? I know a thing or two about guns. I have a cool holy gun. I have like a cool antique gun. What are you trying to get at? What do you want? I want to know that it's magic. It's carved up and jacked up with like magic runes, which I mean, if you want to say are maybe similar to like runes that are inscribed in like a nicer way on your holy gun. Like if you're like, I want to know what this does, like you saw it work and like you're looking at it, so you do. Okay. I am worried we have an enemy in Rex Lemaire. Yeah, uh, after tonight, I, I think I agree with that sentiment. Right. Do you know anything about Rex? All I know is that uh, they want a piece of me. Right. Uh, big Shot runs the docks, controls drugs, among other things, and not someone to be fucked with. Mm. Where does uh, my dad operate out of? I know that. I'm wondering if you know that. Yeah, it's like my information is like would be like kind of almost 10 years old. So, I mean, like I might not know who Rex Lemire is because if it's someone that's rising in power, then that's something I wouldn't I wouldn't know the movements of that type of thing. I see. I see. Um, what I would tell you is that Rex and your father mm -hmm. were both were like rivals when you were still living with okay, your family. So, do you know. so you do. You are generally aware of him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and oh, and in the 10 years since, um, like a lot of, I don't know how much you've kept up with this, but in like a broad general common knowledge situation, your father, after like the events surrounding your almost death, there was like a couple of sort of chains of unfortunate events, a series, if you will. Yep. Rex really like filled that power vacuum and like expanded greatly in the past 10 years. <laughs> I've had a common enemy in Rex Lemaire for the better part of my life, so. Hmm. Interesting. Why, why is it that, again, that you come in, it's, it's, it's 5 a.m. Where's the machine? It's been a long... Right. Right, that's, that's your main thing here. Why do you want that machine again? I hunt demons. Right. And I believe this machine would help. This is something that Rex wants really bad, so it's kind of the only leverage we have in this uh, whole thing. So at the same time, uh, I don't really know you that well. It's a little bit difficult to part with something that may save my skin. Right. I know well, I took it from you. Sorry for that. But... Maybe you did me a favor. Mm. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Is, that. is that what the goons were after? Yeah. Here, how about hypothetically... If I did have a machine. Which you do. Which I do. And I gave it to you hypothetically. What would you do with it? That's just the thing. I like what you said about leverage. Mm. Because Rex is causing me problems in a different area of my life. I would like that to go away. Mm. But I also don't want this machine to get me killed. Yeah, you know, I think that it might be a little bit more trouble than it's worth. All right. Sure. Sure, you know, I'll, I'll honor our deal from before. Yeah, you just gotta go get it. Go get it. Uh, and I'll just uh, tap my foot on the floorboards. And start to move the table, I guess. Okay, I watch you somewhat impressed. Really? You're impressed by my floorboard maneuver? <laughs> I think she thought you had, like, no guile, and now she sees you exhibiting some guile, and I she's see. like, some guile. Uh, I see. I see. Uh, and I scoot the rug out, and it'll be, like, pretty clear from that point that, like, one of them comes loose. But see, here's the thing. Those suits came by the Naturalist Society earlier looking for you, mm -hmm. and I don't know. I feel entangled in this. I don't think I can 
bring it there. I don't think I can keep it safe. What the fuck is this? You come here all the way at five. Do you want it? Do you not want it? I agree that we should use it as leverage. We need to find out what Rex wants with the machine. One thing I think would be interesting, if you wanted to frame it this way, is to say, uh, talk about the lead you have that you found in the notes and say, like, why don't you and I pay a visit kind of thing. Mm. I was pouring through the notes that I have about this machine and there was a name and a number. Would you like to find out about one Angela Whitcomb? I mean, is that that's the only lead that we got, I guess. Uh, when do you think you want to pay a visit then? First thing in the morning. It is first thing in the morning. It's like 5 a.m. No one's awake. I don't want to be rude. Okay, so what, you want to meet there in three hours? Yeah. You, Kitty, have had one vision of disaster, which was the imps at the gallery that was like fully prevented and no one got hurt. And you had one vision, which was Nox uh, terrorizing the club, and that fully happened and many people got hurt, including yourself. Um, although him hurting the other person like kind of saved your life. But you didn't prevent like a vision of disaster. And probably things are going to be a lot harder for everyone because of this event that happened. So um, I kind of want to give you a fresh one. Cool. Because that seems to track, right? Give me with that and fresh you're, like, vision. In a deep dreaming state, so that seems fine. Yeah. You want to roll foretelling? I already rolled foretelling. I rolled an eight. It's a vision, but it is like tinged with dreamy influences. Like it's not fully like a complete, obviously, objectively, like true snapshot of a possible reality. You're in a, an office boardroom mm -hmm. and the boardroom table in front of you, you're sitting at the head of the table. It seems to stretch on forever. Like the other end of the room and the far end of this table are not in sight at all. And um, on your left hand side and on your right hand side on the table all the way down are um, men in suits who are carrying uh, clipboards and portfolios and drinking out of very small glasses of water and kind of mumbling to themselves and each other all in the same voice. You you look down at these kind of nice um, manicured hands that must belong to you and you pick up a gavel that is sitting on the boardroom table and you hammer it three times and all the men fall silent and look up to you. On your left is Dear Philip and he is wearing his navy blue suit and he has a big uh, kind of billowy pink carnation tucked into his lapel, which is very unlike him. And on your right is a man who is slack faced. He looks like he's in his late 50s, early 60s, short, kind of like um, brushy uh, gray haircut. And he is writing in a portfolio, but the pen that's writing in the portfolio is like floating as if by magic because his arm at the sleeve just ends in a stump and there's no hand but still something is gripping the pen and writing these lines as you uh, bang the gavel and the meeting comes to order philip starts speaking to you but it sounds like like a adult on peanuts it's just like kitty and then the man on the other side interrupts and goes, uh, and the two of them start to get into an argument, and you are uh, glancing back and forth as they're making their points. You reach down for your gavel, but it's not there anymore. And then from inside his jacket, Philip pulls out the gavel, and he looks across the table at the other man, and he rears back and throws the gavel, which hits the guy square in the head, and he falls out of his chair on the ground, his forehead bleeding, dead. And you wake up. So, is it like the feeling of that that differentiates that from a regular dream for me? Like, just like a nightmare? I think there are a couple of things that made it feel more like a vision, which is that upon awaking and reflecting, you recognize the room as being a boardroom in City Hall that you've had visions of Philip in before. Mm -hmm. Also, when you wake up and see Roman standing uh, at the foot of the bed in the room, you have that kind of flash and you blink and like a twice exposed negative over Roman's face, you see the man with just one hand, the old man glaring at you and then you blink again and it's gone. Yeah, I wake up with a start immediate with like, what, where am I? What, what what's happening? Katarina, you absolute idiot. What, what do you, where, where am I? Where is this? 
you're in one of your drug dens. And I, like, pull out your sunshine. This is me, like, passive-aggressively. That's not mine. That is... It, it fell into your purse. I was holding it for a second. <laughs> no, my, my stepdaughter, Liz, she had the poster for this concert under her bed with that. I came to find her... Is that why you took it? Because I saw your yellow teeth last night. Well, I didn't know what it was. It smelled... I... So back to my first point about you being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, how am I supposed to know? You took illicit drugs that you don't even know what they do. I didn't... I could have been juice. <laughs> and then, don't get me start on getting shot and trying to talk out your problems with someone holding a gun at you. What was I supposed to do? Just let her shoot... That she was gonna shoot Knox, right? She could have shot like she was just going yeah. for it. She probably would have shot all of you if no like, one stopped her. She was going to shoot someone anyway. Somebody <laughs> had to try and stop her. Uh, Nobody was stopping her. Galaxy brain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm high. <laughs> I'm still high two episodes later. <laughs> Kat, I don't want you taking drugs, showing up in Fairside, and getting shot all in the same hour. Oh, well, then you should. Keep it down in there. She's trying to sleep. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Is that the roommate I don't like? Yeah. Yeah, I knew it. Oh, I'm sorry you didn't tell me the rules. You could have maybe called if you want me to. If you wanted me to know that. Oof. Touche. Look. Okay. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, that's fair. Ten years. It's been about ten years. Well, I didn't think in those ten years you'd become a sunshine smiler and you'd be getting shot every time I turn around. And both of those things happened one time. Kitty, I just, I, I do care about you as a person. I want you to be more careful. Why do I have to feel like the older sister? Just please take care of yourself. I was there to take care of someone, to find someone. What were you doing there? You seemed pretty comfortable. Was that your first time wandering into the the hardware store? She calls it the hardware store. She never calls it the hardware. That's what the sign says. <laughs> <laughs> That's why signs are there to tell you what to call something. Okay, okay. Look, I don't want to sound like a condescending asshole, but it's kind of already my world. I mean, I know everybody in there. So Except then for why the one are you shot lecturing you. me about getting involved? Because you are foreign to this world. You're all flowers and rich husbands. You don't know what to... You call it the hardware store. I, That's what the sign says. <laughs> <laughs> you just... You're lost, Kitty. I just want you to go home where you, I don't know, obviously belong. I just... I'm saying it wrong, but I'm trying to be a, a sister to you. Oh my god. Oh interesting it's not your job to protect me if anything vice versa and it's not your responsibility what trouble i get myself in i thank you honestly thank you for helping me obviously if you hadn't i'd be literally dead, dead. Yeah. yeah but i don't need your lectures i am a grown-up i can learn from my own mistakes Roman's gonna give up this argument a little bit and just like, just like lean on Kitty. And in her mind, she's like, I do think my sister is kind of an idiot. <laughs> I'm sorry. But Roman now is kind of like, well, I guess I'm gonna follow her around and make sure she doesn't get shot again. Because who knows when that's gonna happen next. It only happened once. Um, <laughs> this is not a pattern of. <laughs> I'm keeping this, by the way. So I think, like, it's, if you're calming down, I'm calming down. I mostly just didn't like that you were, like, acting all high and mighty. And I say, so is this where you live? Okay. Um, With neutral judgment, maybe? Or <laughs> yeah, mean judgment? Roman's very defensive to her sister. I don't know. Oh, okay. I mean, not all of us married city councilors. Yes, this is where I live. Hmm. Is it what? Do, what does it look like? Give me a give me a description of your room. <laughs> like in terms of furniture, it's like wooden and like borderline moldy and creaky. But it's 
covered with like dried flowers and photographs and those are like the only yeah personality do you make the connection that's exactly what i was oh yeah so do i recognize do you have photos from the same series that i yeah probably yeah and they're probably like very proudly displayed because they're like the newest batch that Hmm. i took what's that i point at the photos on the wall they're it doesn't matter it's stupid i mean were you into photography when i knew you were you no i don't think so is, or maybe I were you artsy? Was just like starting out, but I was very bad. Okay. When you knew me, I've seen these before. Mm-hmm. A artist uh, submitted pictures really just like that to um, a gala. The fair side gala. Yeah, the fair. Th- I um, I was curating the uh, the selections. I fought for that to get in. Yeah, I yeah I got a letter, got accepted. Did you you pick my photo? Yeah, I. Loved it. It was striking. You helped raise a lot of money for puppies Puppies tying up knots. (laughs) Kitty, I I actually always thought you hated art and stuff like that. I don't know. Why would you think that? What did I... I don't know, I guess... Maybe that you had like a very narrow view of creative expression. That's fair. Maybe you weren't. You didn't appreciate the like my blurry eyeball series one through <laughs> thirty one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Also, Roman's like kind of pretentious. Mm-hmm. Wow. Hey, I, I that means a lot. It, it really genuinely does. And I like, I don't know, hug my sister oh. for the first time in ten years. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. I'm wondering how. Because I think Philip and Liz are going to track you down and be like, she needs to come home now. I'm just wondering if there's like any information Philip or or uh, Liz could reasonably use to like know where she is. Liz, I mean, I have seven roommates also, and argue, and they're. But like, would Liz know that you're my sister? Uh, that's a good question. Did she see us interacting? Yeah. Yeah. Liz could reasonably track like, track you down. Maybe if she knows both of us like can see a family resemblance and like after seeing us interact be like oh a b yeah, yeah. I know other that. npcs yeah. also can use deductive reasoning not just <laughs> you guys um so i think as you as you head back over to the bed roman and you wrap your arms around kitty's shoulder and you two press your heads together um you hear a uh, hammering on the front door of the house you hear surrender my kitty <laughs> oh, terrible god <laughs> Right now, or I'm calling the the mounted gentleman. <laughs> RCMP. Well, RCMG. We don't, I don't know if we have that, so it's the mounted gentleman. <laughs> you know the ones. <laughs> the mount gents. Um, <laughs> Weird. That's that's your gentle husband, mounts. right? There it is. I'm calling the gentle mounts. Sounds like a sex thing. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so you better open the fucking door. And begin this scene. Um. <laughs> That's your husband, right? That sounds like him. You- he has a pretty distinctive voice. Okay, I'm gonna tell him to go away. Why? No, I'm asking. Oh, I, would, I wouldn't tell him to go away unless I have a reason to not want to okay. go with him, and I don't right now. Do you okay. want him to know that you got shot? Ooh, good point. <laughs> you look very visibly shot. But I also don't lie to him. That's part of it. Okay, I do think that if we tell Philip, he will forbid you from keeping to going to Fairside. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, Which, he'll forbid you, eh? But almost Roman's like, yeah, maybe that is what I want, because that ultimately keeps you safer. Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll let Philip in. <laughs> okay. Philip's, like, <laughs> knuckles are starting to bruise. He's just been hammering and yelling for, like, two and a half minutes. Um, he opened the door and he says, what, what sort of um, debauchery, debauchery? Based headquarters is this? Where's oh my kitty? Oh god, you must be that politician. Um, she's upstairs. He shoves past you, behind him, um, Liz okay. is- Yeah, he's very upset. <laughs> behind him, Liz is kind of, um, perched in the doorway, and she's like, Yeah, <laughs> he's pretty cheesed. Did you phone him? Yeah, but just so that he wouldn't call, like, a missing persons report. No, yeah, that's- that's- probably good um he's been foaming at the mouth since 4 a.m he's like always like this yeah that's why i hang out here what's good i'm gonna like (laughs) flash the sunshine be like i'm gonna keep this 
Are you gonna um, hand that over to you know who? I'm still deciding. Depends how much she wants to kill me. I think the longer you wait to decide, the the more that's gonna head up. So yeah. Act fast. Strike while the iron's hot, and all that. If you need me, I'll be at home. <laughs> Does Liz like leave? Yeah. All right. See you, Liz. Kitty. Um, Philip storms into Roman's bedroom and he stops short when he sees you laid up in bed and he lets out a big theatrical gasp. <gasps> he says, Kitty? What's happened to you, Kitty? I, I was shot. Ah! Okay, if you're gonna stay in this house, you're gonna need to bring it down, like half. Who, who is this, Kitty? Who is this that I'm um, speaking with? Who have the pleasure? told you. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, this is my sister, Roman. Roman, this is my husband. Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> Were you involved in this, um, this uh, incident? No, 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 no. She got me out. She saved me. S saved you from what, Kitty? What happened? I got shot. Yes, by whom, Kitty? I don't really know. A um, murder mystery. I, I, I can't stand this. You have to tell me what's happening. Um, Liz, Liz hadn't come home, and I found a, uh, I found the poster for the concert under her bed. So I went to the concert to make sure she was okay. You'd mentioned wanting to go out dancing. Yeah. Um. I also, I did. Then just things kind of got out of control. I saw Roman. I kind of got distracted from trying to find Betty. And then, I don't know why, this crazy woman, this wild woman, came guns a -blaze and <laughs> started shooting people in the club. I thought, well, somebody has to go talk to her. Somebody has to stop this. And then I was here. Kitty, why didn't you d telephone the authorities or, or just flee? Why would you put yourself in danger like that? That's not really how it works around here. Well, maybe how it works around here is fucked up. And I'm sorry to speak such strongly, but you can't just sit there and you, Kitty, lie there and tell me that this was just a, a natural occurrence that was bound to happen sooner or later. A woman has been shot. Did you have nothing to say about it? Um, that was... You don't need to say anything, Kitty. Just... Just take a deep breath. I've, I've got a car around the corner and... We'll take you back to the apartment, we'll we'll call Dr. Brownstein and we'll we'll take some time. I'll take the week off work and, and we'll just make sure that you are in, in perfect health. Well first of all, I know this is a magical bullet, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if this if Dr. Brownstein is able to help me with this. I actually don't know if I wanna go home quite yet. I'm What are you there's talking a, about? There's a spare room here. Oh, that's sad. Um, <laughs> okay. I, that is sad. <laughs> I, like, glance at Roman. Is Betty there? No, she left. There's something happening. I'm worried. I'm worried about you, Roman. I would like to help if I can help with what, whatever's happening here. What are you talking about? You can't just not come home. Is it, do, you need, do you need money? I'll cut you a check. Oh, is that what you want? You're disgusting. Excuse me. Don't talk to him that way. <laughs> He's not respecting you at all. Kitty, it's very sweet that you want to reconnect with your sister. Of course, I would never begrudge you that, but don't you think it's a tad extreme to take up lodgings with her, a woman you haven't seen in ten years, as you're recovering from a grievous injury? Philip, for the past few weeks, my visions, they've been about this. They've been the monster and Roman. I haven't been able to have a clear head. Things can't go back to normal until whatever is happening here has been dealt with. Kitty, I, I don't understand. Why won't you come home, Kitty? <laughs> I want to come home, but I won't be able to focus on our life unless whatever is happening, whatever is messing with my head is done. I'm also trying to cash in a debt here. You're going to cash in a debt? I think that's probably the only way to kind of shut this down, because Philip's like, you sound like you are not behaving rationally. And like, the course of action does it is really wild. Um, so you're just kind of like... I'm saying, 
I'm on. A, I'm saying that like I won't be able to like help him in the way that I've been helping him. Yeah, there's until- that subtext. I think there's also like um, and this is about like my magic and like my family, neither of which like you understand. Yeah. So like I'm pulling that card and like this is like a kitty thing. Mm-hmm. Um, which hurts him, I think, a lot. Oh. Um, oh well. <laughs> He'll live. Just- it's not like I shot him. <laughs> uh. He looks at you, Kitty, and you can see his heart breaking as you tell him you're not going to come home with him today. And he looks over to you, Roman, and his eyes sharpen, and a nasty scowl passes his face for a second, and he says, um, If you change your mind, Kitty, just call. And I will send a car. I'll be back to visit tomorrow. Thanks for listening to episode 5 of Lakeshore. Episode 6 will be out on April 14th. We've recently launched a Patreon to support the show, and we'd like to shout out one of our patrons, Kel. Thanks for supporting the show, Kel. You're the best. See you next time. Oh, I should also say where the Patreon is. It's patreon.com slash many realms.